What's up friends, Audrey here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how I almost got scammed out of $2,000. So back in mid-November, I started looking for apartments. I had been living at home with my family prior to that because of the pandemic, and I was looking for apartments, trying to get feelers out, planning to move around mid-January, early February. I have now moved, so also if you hear any background noise, I live on a slightly busy street here in New York City. So, um, sorry, I can't really do anything about that. Anyway, so back in the middle of November, I started looking on websites like Street Easy and Apartments.com mainly, and I found this apartment that was in the East Village, perfect location for what I was looking for. It was a one bedroom, but almost like a two bedroom, but just like a very open concept. This apartment was going for $1,000 a month. Everything like utilities wise was included in the rent, and I could have kept it furnished if I wanted. Now, looking at that, obviously I thought this was way too good to be true, but I still wanted to check and, cause you never know, like maybe it actually was just like that once in a lifetime, like it's too good to be true, but it actually is true. So I emailed the address that was on the listing on apartments.com and a few days later, I got an email back from this guy, Michael B. Some of the things he sent to me in the first email after I just requested to see if it was still available were, um, red flags that I should have picked up on but decided to ignore because the other information seemed valid so I was like maybe it's not a problem. For example, he let me know that he works as a civil engineer for a company, didn't specify what company, he works for developed projects all around the world and he then proceeded to tell me that he received a very good offer for them to move him to the United Kingdom department and it's an offer that he's accepted. Great, awesome for you. So he said the apartment is vacant so you can move in anytime you want. Also my contract in the UK is for the next six years. So for this period, I will not return 100% of the time. Like that's kind of weird. He also mentions that the price he's asking is below the market because he wants to find a responsible tenant to take good care of the place. How is renting it at $1,000 a month in a prime location gonna get you a responsible tenant? If someone is looking for rent that's in the $1,000 range, they are usually gonna be young people like me, which are not um, particularly known for being the most responsible tenant. Not saying that I'm a bad tenant, but it just doesn't really make sense as to why the reason the rent is low is because he's looking for a responsible tenant. That's, yeah. And then he attached a bunch of pictures, which were mostly the pictures that I had already seen on apartments.com, but it was nice to like see them again. After this first email back from this guy, Michael B, I obviously had some reservations, as I should, and so I emailed him back asking about, even though he was already out of the country, if there was any way I could see the apartment before I gave any deposit or applied. And then I wasn't looking to move until January. This was middle of November. I was like, is it possible to confirm that I will get the apartment even though I won't be moving for like another month and a half potentially. And then I also asked if he had a LinkedIn or Facebook page just so I could like have an idea of who I would be renting from if I did go forward. So then I got a very, very long email back to him basically explaining that he wouldn't be able to give me access to see the apartment before renting it and went this whole like long-winded way of explaining why that wasn't really necessary and also kind of said that that was part of the reason that the price was low because you wouldn't be able to go and see it before you were renting it and then he explained how the rental works and he said he was using Flipkey, which is a service provided by TripAdvisor if you don't know what TripAdvisor is it's basically like a travel agency um, website where you can book excursions and hotels and keep track of your trips all in one place. They have really great reviews and it's a commonly used website for people who are traveling. But I guess this website Flipkey that he was saying the rental was going to be through is for more long-term rentals. So it's kind of like a TripAdvisor's Airbnb, but more for like long-term vacation rentals or something more of like a short lease instead of just like a few days or a week. So after he sent me that information, I went and checked out Flipkey and I was like, okay, this is a legit website. That made it sound credible. And I looked at the reviews for Flipkey and I was like, okay, maybe this is real. Basically in that email, he didn't answer any of the questions that I asked him except for the fact that I wasn't able to go and see the apartment before giving him any money. 
So in my next email back to him, I asked him what were the dimensions of the apartment, how much was the deposit, what floor the apartment was on, because I knew I didn't want to live on the first floor of any apartment, just as like a safety thing, living alone, being on the first floor, people being able to like get into your apartment. Didn't want to have to worry about that. And then fourth, I asked him how I would get the keys and sign the lease and everything since we were doing this all virtually and he wasn't in the US to my knowledge. From that, he sent me another extremely long email saying what he would need, which was just like normal stuff, first month rent and last month's rent and like official documents, that kind of stuff. Then he went over how the whole transaction, like going through Flipkey would work because that was how I was going to proceed. I guess Flipkey was gonna be like the third party, kind of like a broker where I would send them all of the information and they would hold the money until I got the keys and got a chance to look at the apartment. And then once I said yes and signed the lease, Flipkey would then give the funds to the owner or the person leasing the apartment. So I was like, okay, that sounds legit. Like, let's, let's see what else. So the whole thing with the money was that it was going to be $2,000 first and last month's rent. And I would send that to flip key. Then we'd do the whole thing with keys. I would have a chance. And if I didn't like the apartment, I would get that $2,000 back supposedly. So that's what was kind of like, okay, I'm not really losing anything if I don't end up liking it, I'll just get my money back. At that point, I was like, this sounds pretty legit, let's move forward. And I gave him some information, not like everything, but I did give him some information, just like my name and my phone number and the day that I wanted to start the lease on, just to be like, yes, I wanna start. So then we got to the part where he was like, all right, we are doing this, I have the information ready, I'll go to the flip key offices here in the UK in the morning and start the transaction. From that point on, he said that I would have 24 hours to send the $2,000 to flip key to like keep the ball rolling and if I didn't send the two thousand dollars by then that he would be charged money because I guess it was like a one hundred and eighty dollar transaction fee to like get everything started and he would have been charged an additional amount on top of that so of course at this point like the money was about to be moving so I was definitely getting a little more cautious I had talked to people at work about it and they were very skeptical they were like I think you're getting scammed and I talked to my mom about it and she was like I mean it does seem too good to be true but like also it kind of adds up like he even sent me oh no he did send me at one point his passport so I was like okay like he's sending me a passport but I still like couldn't totally figure out who he was. I looked his name up online and like nothing really came up, but I feel like I was just trying to be like, no, it's gonna work out. This isn't a scam because I wanted it to be true. And then after I got that email, I was talking to my dad about it and he was like, let's just do a little more digging into this whole like flip key rental thing. We searched it and we got all kinds of Reddit threads. And that is when I realized it was a scam. And I was like, okay, this is real. People at work were right to be skeptical. I mean, I had been skeptical, but I feel like I wanted it to be true, even though I knew it might not be, that I was like, maybe it'll work out, like fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so then I found Reddit threads and they were all saying the same thing where they had been looking for a place to stay and there was apartments renting for $1,000 flat rate. You just paid that plus the other thousand for the last month or a security deposit, whatever it was in that specific situation. And um, there were multiple threads of it where they were like, I was scammed out of $1,500. I was scammed out of $2,000. I wish I had researched this. This is a scam. Totally explaining that like they had been told that this was the money. They were going to do it through flip key. This was mentioned. They were doing it through flip key and they deposited the money with the idea that if they didn't want the place, they would get that money 100% back. And then they never got the money back. So after that, I was like, all right, I can't, like this is obviously a scam. So I emailed the guy and I said, you know what? I'm looking into it. I don't want to move forward. Please don't continue with the process. And I never heard from him again. And the crazy thing is then I was looking back through my emails one day and even a few months before, I had just been like dabbling with the idea of moving to Boston because I'm from Massachusetts and I was like, maybe I'll just move to Boston. It's a smaller city, but it's close to home. So it's easier. 
and with COVID, I was like, maybe that's the move. And one of the apartments that I had looked at, and I'm pretty sure it was from an apartments.com ad, there was a ad for this gorgeous townhouse in like the Beacon Hill area in Boston. And it was the same exact scenario where it was $1,000, everything was included the guy was like working in some other country for i think it was six years and it was it was i'm sure a scam so i'm happy that i did not have to learn that lesson the hard way because two thousand dollars would have been a big pill to swallow having lost that kind of money so learn from me and if something seems too good to be true it probably is I would also say maybe like stay away from apartments.com because I thought it was a reliable site to be looking at apartments for, but um, it seems like that is not the way to go. Since then, I really only looked on Street Easy, which seems to be like the universal place to look for apartments as I've seen most New Yorkers and other vlogs and stuff. So I'd say Street Easy is a pretty safe bet. Obviously, you never know, there could always be a scam. So when you get those tingling sensations and those thoughts of maybe this is too good to be true, just go with your gut. Don't even waste your time, just go with your gut because in the long run you'll probably save yourself a couple thousand dollars. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this saves you from getting scammed. There are so many scams out there. And I feel like right now with the pandemic, people are even a little extra vulnerable with scams because like money is tight and you just want things that like seem great to actually be great because we all need some greatness in our lives right now. So stay safe and sane, listen to your tingly senses and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.